Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0 0.90 Beta. In this episode we're beginning on the start screen for a very good reason and it's related to the potential demise of that lunar base from the previous episode. I know it's taken me a while to get this episode out but that was because I was tinkering around with it. I still haven't figured it out. So what I was trying to do was to move the Kerbals at the base over to the emergency hab, right? Uh, the emergency hab is safely out of physics range of the base and hopefully would survive and I was trying to do that in the persistent file. Unfortunately, having made those edits and I've been sure to make edits in the TAC life support sections and all the sections that mention these Kerbals and uh, tried to make sure everything is consistent but the game doesn't like it. I click uh, resume saved and it doesn't, it doesn't want to. It, uh, it doesn't want to even give me the dialogue to pick a saved game to resume. So clearly my edits are not acceptable. And so that's a problem. Uh, I'll continue working on it, but I've tried this over and over and over again. Tried to fix whatever. I've combed through 10,000 lines of persistent file. It doesn't work. So I'm going to load this back up with the old persistent file before I move them over to emergency hab. And I guess we'll pick things up from there. And well, we'll see how that goes. Now, I do hate leaving the Kerbals at risk like that, and there were other comments in the YouTube comment section that gave suggestions, aside from the suggestion to move them to the emergency hab through the persistent file. Uh, so, I'll look into that, but I, I have to admit, um, yeah, I am uh, leaning towards restarting the series in 1.0.5 at this point because this is not the only glitch that we've encountered. We've got the Explorer X and there is the fact that uh, generally I have to restart the program three or four times every single time I I try and record an episode. So yeah, there are a lot of things I could be fixing here and I'm just struggling through which is delaying the release of the episodes in the first place. But for now, uh, we do have some room to maneuver because the at-risk Kerbal is actually the one in the gold bug which is well, I had turned to in order to try and resolve the, uh, uh, to discover the issue at the lunar base. But um, yeah, 58 days for that crew member. And then at uh, the Kerbitat, we actually have 408 days. So they're fine for uh, an extended period of time. Um, though, uh, I mean, fine is a relative term, of course, because they're in a base ready to explode. So anyway, that's the situation. We have a scheduled resupply of the Carbonite Mining Station and Kerbin Station Core. Um, let me just check how they're doing. Carbonite Mining Station seems to be all right now. So uh, I think we resupplied that properly. And Kerbin Station Core, I think that was up there. Kerbin Station Core is fine as well. So we've done those resupplies. Okay, uh, so basically it's straight through with the missions that we've got planned. And then uh, right about where the Explorer X returns is when the gold bug is going to have its issue. So that's the deadline. The last thing we can do is probably the Explorer X. It'll be tight though, four days between that arriving in uh, Kerbin SOI and the gold bug having its issue. Okay, but let's start off with this. This is actually Duna Resupply Mission 1 and we are going to bring it into Duna SOI and that'll only be uh, uh, less than a day before the scanner pro gets in these are all about half a day apart yep uh, which should be enough time to deal with them individually now when it comes to resupply we have to ask what are they going to be docking with Taking a look at our Duna missions, the CRT needs some fuel. Duna Station is what really needs fuel. It's got uh, not fuel, sorry, food, water, and oxygen. It's only got 74 days, six crew members there. We could always get the CRT back to the station if that one crew member needs stuff. But yeah, let's uh, prioritize getting all this stuff to the station. So we will want uh, entry into the Duna system that will facilitate that, of course. This uh, periodic halt of time warp is also another thing that I would like to get away from. You know, every seven hours or so, it decides to take a pause during time warping. And that's yet another thing that I would like to have resolved. 
through a new installation of this colonization series. I mean, very clearly, something is being calculated every seven hours. Yeah, yeah, I know, we're, we're trying to get to Duna Station 1. Now it's all in the yellow. Okay, well, at least uh, attack life support does give us a lot of buffer time to deal with these issues. Okay, so, let's target the... Wow, we've got a w pretty weird approach. Probably should have fixed that a little bit earlier. But anyway, mm, good thing we have a fair amount of Delta V. Not in this stage, we've only got 9 meters per second. On the other stage, we will. Okay, well, let's do this burn initially, get that stage off and then proceed. Okay, shut off. Set. And control from here. Then continue. Okay, about four degrees off from our target. Like, uh, two degrees, sorry. 2.3 degrees off from our target. Okay. How long will it take? It'll take 12 hours to get to our periapsis, and we have 17 hours till the next mission, so that's excellent. And that's till the next mission gets into Duna SOI. We would still have plenty of time to deal with it after that. And so here we go, making orbit. We'll get into a Titus orbit that still gets us an encounter right there, it looks like. I don't think we can do another orbit. This it won't meet up. Okay, so we'll have to keep it looser than that. We'll probably have to do uh, inclination adjustment there, uh, at least whatever we can't do right here. We aren't quite meeting up with it. 10 kilometers apart is not bad. Let's see if we can tilt it. I mean, part of the retro burn, it won't be too bad for us to... Uh, oh, we can get the descending node right there. That'll be good. That'll work out. Push the descending node into the rendezvous point. Even though that actually increases our relative inclination to the target. And we get 4.2 3.8 I think I'll leave it at 3.8. We'll need some time to match up with it anyway. This stage is not very fast. Okay, and I'll take 623.5 meters per second. We've got plenty. Okay, let's get on over to Duna. Where is Duna? Okay, here we go for orbit. Okay, we have orbit. As planned, our inclination relative to the target is actually increasing in order to make that rendezvous. Okay, I'm watching for minimal closest approach distance now. Okay, five kilometers. Not great. All right. Well, uh, we should. Uh, that's in an hour and 46 minutes. That's still before Duna Scanner Pro, so I think we can get it there. And what's our difference? 137 meters per second? Uh, not node. Looks like we've packed a good amount of fuel to deal with this situation. Oop, oop, oop. I forgot to not allow smart ASS to do that. Uh, point towards target instead. Now the question is, uh, what docking port do I use exactly? Don't seem to have that planned out very well. Okay, 100 meters will be fine for now. Um, yeah, let's see on the other side here. Okay, we've got a huge spinning se section here. Really only one docking port except for its transfer stage which still has fuel. So we probably shouldn't dump that. Yeah, just the docking port on the nose. So we'll open that up. I think uh, we will discard uh, the resupply vessel by actually having it smash into Duna. So we'll fill these tanks up and then we'll have it uh, deorbit itself. 
Okay, that seems pretty much in line on that axis. Okay, seems pretty much in line to me. Closest approach distance under two meters. Well, now under one meter. Okay, here we go. 16 meters according to Mechjeb. I would say that Mechjeb is roughly correct about the situation in this case. Interesting situation here on Navball. But, um, everything looks alright. A little bit high here, but the magnetism should be able to deal with that. There I go correcting it anyway. No point giving Kerbal any excuse to mess me up. Okay, we are docked. Now transferring all the things. Yeah, might as well do one tank at a time. There's no way it's going to be any faster. Okay, so basic resource transfer has been completed and I think I'll transfer this liquid fuel and oxidizer over here. And we'll use the RCS to deorbit this. Okay, so that should do it. These tanks are all empty. There's no other resource here except for mob propellant. And this yeah, it does have mob propellant, and this is mob propellant tanks are pretty much full anyway. So no problems there. Okay. Oh. There's an open hatch thing, but I guess we don't need to open hatch. Undock. Away it goes. And the station now. Tuna Station 1 has 405 days. We can boost that up with the secondary supply. Though uh, we can't empty the secondary supply at the station. It'll have uh, some leftover inside of it. So we'll send the leftover over to the CRT. Okay pretty decisive retro burn as we will bring the periapsis to a negative number and uh, yep I think we can call that complete right there alright we salute the efforts of the Duna resupply mission number one it has been successful and uh, we will now turn to Duna scanner pro let's aim for that okay that's not a bad correction and we've got tons and tons of fuel uh, this was originally meant for Drez, after all. So, uh, we have overcompensated here. I guess we can deploy scanner. And if I say start resource scan, it says too high. Okay. Okay, correction burn. And uh, let's try and get it to 90 degrees, actually. There we go. 90 degrees, so polar orbit, very definitely. And our periapsis is safe. Good. Let us continue on in. We have 18 hours until the second resupply mission comes in. Surprised water is 0% when we're over the poles and there definitely ought to be water around here. Oh wait, uh, water atmosphere 5%? It's a lot in the atmosphere. Hmm. Definitely no ocean. Okay, I started retro burning a bit early. So we've got this somewhat eccentric orbit, but that's not uh, entirely a bad thing. Let's take a look at ScanSat. Big map. Not altimetry map of the sun, that's just weird. Um, Duna. Not altimetry either. I want water. And so I'm gonna let it, uh, we've got five hours until we have to deal with the resupply mission, so let's have it do some scanning at length here. Maybe if it turns out that Duna isn't good for water, maybe Ike? Ike doesn't look like it has water, but you never know. Okay, we are now back at our apoapsis, or close to it. Let's see. Still ideal altitude, so that's not a problem. Let's see. This is Duna. 
water 0% I just saw indication there water 0 0 0 0 there's no water on Duna that's gonna sort of hamper the whole whole affair really Yep, it's tough to see how we're going to colonize this place if there is there isn't even any ice water to drill or anything. Yeah, there's it's zero. It's showing zero there. Not a great map right now, but uh, this probe doesn't have altimetry data scanning. Not ore. Well, we do have indications of ore. This ore isn't the same as the ore in 1.0. This is not refuelable ore. And this, uh, we don't have a carbonite scanner, so we can't check for that. Hmm. Still got a plant a flag on Duna mission there. Okay, anyway, um, next mission, I guess. Duna resupply. This is a bit of a bummer, though. Okay, we are now within one minute of Duna SOI. And that does it. Okay, 40 degrees is not good for rendezvous with the station, and that's our first order of business. So, let's see, yeah, focus view on Duna. Set target to the station. Okay, well, uh, that's pretty good. That's not bad. Looks like a nice point of contact. Oh, well, not quite a point of contact there. Hmm. Okay, now it looks like a point of contact. All right. So we'll go for this correction. And once again, we're going to be dumping this stage. It only has 10 meters per second in it. So let's hop to that. Otherwise, everything should work out about the same as resupply one, except we're not going to be deorbiting de this this time. It's not going to be able to empty itself. Okay, that's the end of that stage. Throttle down. Set. Control from here. The Smarty SS turn around. Switch back over. And burn. Okay, 0.88 degrees difference in our inclination. Our periapsis 184.7 and in we go three kilometers should be fine okay we will do that just a simple 640.1 meter per second retro burn okay we are in orbit and we are merely trying to get our closest approach distance down Okay, two kilometers. Sounds just fine. Let's head over there. So after this, looking at it, we have the Duna refinery. We should definitely get that into orbit quickly. Uh, that scanner pro is starting to do, deal with non-Duna stuff. That's the Drez scanner, I think. Yeah, so uh, that is that's entering Duna SOI, and then the Explorer X. I think after the Duna Refinery, the other stuff we should handle in the next episode, especially the Explorer X, because then then we're getting into territory where we have to worry about the Kerbal and the Gold Bug. So maybe I'll have some thoughts by then, or I'll try something different that works. Okay, well, um, Duna Refinery is entering the Duna SOI. I think I'm going to wait on it until we dock this. It shouldn't come too close to Duna in the meantime. So I'm going to close the alarm, but I won't get rid of it, just so that we would remember. 
matching velocities with target. Okay, I've been a little bit generous about my speed. 15 meter per second approach. I guess I'm in a hurry. I'm trying to figure out which way we're coming in from. I think I'll have the station turn around to face us. I didn't do that with the last one, but this seems like a more awkward position. Well, we look to be all lined up and it seems to be fine. Plenty of spare fuel. Looks like the six Kerbals we have sent here should be quite comfortable for the time being. Despite the fact that Duna itself does not provide any resources to replenish them. We will have to look into Ike after the scanning around Duna is done. Take a look at the big map here. Resources, water. Let's see if it's found any. Well, doesn't look like it. Not even the slightest hint of water. Uh, as I hover over it, you can see down below in purple it says water 0%. So it's not that it's not scanning for it. It is scanning for it and finding none. It's a lot of water 0%. How strange. Okay, well, we have learned something vital about Duna. Water isn't here. Makes you wonder what all the white stuff on the poles is, but could be dry ice, I assume. You know, CO2. Okay, two meters. Looking quite good here, a little bit off I suppose that should do the trick alright okay so how much food, water and oxygen do they have now? 700 and almost 60, 759 days for 6 crew which is excellent and uh, as far as the CRT it's got 246 days. The gold bug is what we're worried about now. After, aside from the gold bug, everything else seems to have. Let's see what the minimum is. CRT is 246. Uh, oxygen is 134 days for Drez Oasis. But it, I think it can convert the water into oxygen. I think it has one of those converters on it, so we should use that. Yeah, so I don't think we need to resupply the Drez Oasis, but uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that. But that's that's the situation. We're pretty well supplied. Anyway, let's take a look at the Duna Refinery. So this is a grand and complicated vessel, and unfortunately, potentially useless. Well, it's not useless. It's got one drill for water and minerals, and another that can deal with ore substrate and uraninite. So at, uh, it seems that Duna has some resources, but the core fuel refinery here relies on water and so it's not going to be able to refine water it can drill for whatever it likes but it'll have to have some tanks connected to it using these flexo tubes in order to store that stuff it's drilling for and the one thing it can't drill for is what it was meant to drill for so that's the downside and of course we've got the weird situation where the thrusters are not in line with the control unit and that's gonna cause me all sorts of problems oh there's an Ike encounter there is it you know I'm not entirely against that maybe we should let, let's plot that first and then we'll contemplate that possibility now that node is completely useless to us um, I don't actually know which way to turn this in order to make sure it actually burns properly. Let's see. So maybe like this. Yeah, okay. Oh, uh, that's not right. It's just gonna keep rotating. Okay, so I wanted to see your smart ESS point prograde eventually. It's not really prograde. I, I want that inclination change too though. Hmm. I think I'll have to do one thing at a time because I can't adjust just a few degrees like that. 
Yeah, we'll just have to do one axis at a time. Well, our inclination is going down, so that's good. Uh, we're deviating from the prograde vector, which is bad. We don't have any mob propellant or anything. It's all down to the gimbling on these things. I guess that's not much. Okay, this is clearly no longer the right direction. <laughs> Um, hmm. I'm sure there's a perfectly logical way to think through this, and of course I'm not doing that, I'm just pointing in a certain direction and hoping for the best. Okay, I'll take that. 100 kilometers, 11 degree inclination, yeah, I'm satisfied. We've got lots of fuel to correct anything later on, if I so desire. Let's just get into orbit now. Looks like we are on approach to Ike, so shall we do that? I mean, there's apparently no reason to put this down on Duna, because there's nothing for it to drill. Maybe there's something around Ike. Let's get into orbit around Ike first. And then maybe Duna will be... I don't know. Let's see. Uh, from there, how much will it take? Let's say I want to get into orbit around Ike. Uh... Okay, that's just weird. No, that takes more than it takes to get into orbit around Duna. I think getting into orbit around Duna and then transferring to Ike might be easier. No, oh, there's some other timer. Ah, the Scanner Pro. But we'll take care of that in the next episode. It's going to be a little bit hard to figure out exactly where to point. Sort of like this. Eh, maybe it's, I mean, it seems like the delta V requirement is going down, so I guess this is not an incorrect way to point so far. Oh, we're rotating a lot, though. There's no way this is the most efficient way to point. Fortunately, this vehicle has a ridiculous amount of supplies. But well, that's meant. Uh, that's because it was meant to be a ground base. Tough to resupply those, of course. Well, this is not ending up exactly the way I wanted it. That's for sure. Hmm. Maybe I should just be satisfied getting into orbit around the moon. I mean, around Mars. Uh, moon, Mars, Duna, Duna. Satisfied getting into orbit around Duna. Because I'm not getting uh, the approach to Ike I had wanted. Getting a approach to Ike, but not the one I wanted. Well, that's an approach, but highly inclined. It does sort of help get us to orbit, but it's a weird orbit on this side. Well, that's a tighter orbit. Uh, it doesn't seem worth it. Because I'm about to get closer than that. Okay. So one end is high just in case we want to boost that again to Ike. And also so that we can pro probably do a inclination change on one side or another. Or an off-plane transfer. All sorts of possibilities. Because the original plan for this refinery has been botched. Because... We sent it over here without knowing whether there was any water for it to use. So now we have to come up with an alternative plan. And so I'll have to think about that. And next time we've got Scanner Pro, Half Moo coming into Duna. Then the Explorer X heading into Kerbin. So we have to rescue those Kerbals. And uh, then we have to, then that, that's the last chance to figure out what to do about the gold bug. 
Alright, so uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.